Hello, welcome back to the experimental photographer. Reflectography, refractography, lensless photography. What does it all mean? In this episode, we will be peering into this bizarre facet of camera work where up is down, left is right, and phantom shapes appear and morph as ephemerally as the photons of light that create them. The patterns and shapes that can be extracted with this process tend to be organic, loosely structured, and fantastically detailed. Have you ever noticed the strange shapes that appear on a wall or a ceiling from, say, sunlight reflecting off of a glass object or a shiny object? Well, this is a form of reflectography, and this is what we will capture with a camera. So, why can't we just capture this with the lens on the camera? Well, because the lens reorganizes the light rays back to a point, if focused. And if defocused, it just scatters the light as bokeh, and all the beautiful detail would be lost in the blur. Now, I'm not sure exactly what is going on here, but I suspect that lensless photography is very similar to camera obscura, or a pinhole camera. What is the difference between reflectography and refractography? Many people just refer to the whole ball of wax as refractography, but there is a difference. In refractography, light is passed through a translucent medium, such as glass, which distorts the light on its way through. With reflectography, the light is reflected at angles off of a shiny surface. Both methods create beautiful wavelength separations, and also banding from phase cancellation. In essence, it's the wave properties of light itself creating this beautiful spectacle for us to capture. Okay, here we are with the equipment that we need to do our refractography slash reflectography. As you can see here, I have a good assortment of glass objects. Um, Anything will work that's glass, I guess. I have wine glasses, ornamental glass, um, art glass, and a little perfume bottle there. If you're doing a refractography, you need to have a piece that's um, translucent. You can see all the way through it. And uh, also it helps that it's a slightly larger piece, like maybe six inches in diameter to uh, cover the front of the camera. And if you're doing refractography, well, just about any object that creates a caustic reflection is game. Okay, flashlights. We're getting a flashlight. Um, I suppose it is possible to do this with uh, sunlight just by closing the drapes and letting just a tiny amount of light in. But um, sunlight is kind of dangerous. It's uh, dangerously intense. and I wouldn't recommend it. So, we're going to use a flashlight as our light source. You can see we have to modify it a little bit. have a few different designs here. Now, you could just cover the front and put a little hole there. But this method doesn't work too good. And here's a universal connector that I've done similar. Put a uh, foil in front of it. If you don't own a universal connector, I'm always recommending that people buy one. It attaches to any flashlight, or most flashlights I should say, and you can attach all kinds of little goodies to it for uh, light painting and stuff. And also um, baffles and hoods and snoots and all that kind of good stuff. I guess this is the most hastily made design here. This one is slightly better, but this one is even better. I find that it's not so much the size of the hole that matters. <laughs> it's, uh, it's how far away that this aperture is from the actual light source. I'm guessing the reason for that is that this little thing kind of acts like a polarizer, polarizes the light. So the light coming out of the end here 
is traveling in a straight line. So, something with a little bit of distance between the light and the end aperture. This is a, a paper towel roll center. You could probably also use a um, toilet paper roll. <laughs> then you would just shove the flashlight in the end here and light it. What else will we need? We will need a camera, of course, with the lens off. And... Um, Preferably with the tripod to go with it. And, you know, I don't think a shutter release cable is required, but probably helps. And I have a few light stands here that I use. They're not required, but they definitely make things easier. This one here I use to attach my flashlight to. And this one here has a magic arm on it. Another little goodie. It works. You can... You can adjust it in any, basically any configuration and clamp things to it. And also I have this little homemade platform that I made. As you can see I attached a quick release plate to the bottom there. I can attach it to any one of my tripods and I can also attach it to my light stands. Most often what I do is I use these two together. I'll place a piece of glass on the platform and then I will use the magic arm to position it how I want. None of this stuff is required, but makes life easier. The uh, light stands, you know, they're fairly cheap. I think they go for around 30 bucks on Amazon. Now you could totally do this off of a table or, you know, a platform, a larger platform like my uh, piano bench here. Just make sure you cover the uh, surface with a dark cloth. And keep in mind that the platform has the potential to throw unwanted light into your scene. <laughs> so that's why I kind of get my glass out here in the open where there's not much to reflect the light into my image. And as you can see here, I have this one all set up on my platform with the glass and the magic arm is holding it in place. I've fidgeted with it until I got it how I wanted it, the picture. The glass is about a foot away from the camera. Lens is off, all ready to go. My light source is in the other room. Approximately, oh, I'd say 12 feet away. 12 to 15 feet seems optimum and again you know you don't have to have a stand for your light you can set it on a table or something and just prop it up so it points in the proper direction mine here you can see I have that attached with some rubber bands I find that rubber bands come quite in handy for attaching stuff tripods and this and that everything's in place still daytime out but we're gonna take a shot just to give you an idea Let's see there I already have something there it's not beautiful but uh, wait until it gets dark and we will get something beautiful so just to go over it once more obviously shooting lensless exposes your camera to some uh, you know, it's the risk of dust and other damage from the very delicate sensor inside. I'm not recommending anyone do this, but I use these sensor swabs. And they seem to work pretty good. With reflectography and refractography, you know, not only do you have to risk getting dust in there, but if there's dust on the sensor, when you go to do the reflectography, refractography, you will have dust all over your photo because this method is ruthless when it comes to dust. <laughs> so typically what I do is I actually clean my sensor before I take my reflectography, refractography shots. Well, all right, here we are for our live demo. Going to do things a little bit different this time. 
I uh, just figured out like 10 minutes ago that I can do lensless video. It is super cool. So we're going to do that. And the process is basically the same as, uh, as if I were to use stills. Just go in here, turn on the video. And basically, I would just turn the glass, search out the glass for patterns that I like. really quite mesmerizing and just sit here and search glass I'll end up with uh, every piece of glass I own <laughs> and I'll be twisting it and turning it to see what I can find so if I was taking a still I would search out the glass like this until I found something I like and I like this and so I would take a still of this right here all right here's our reflectography demo with reflectography I'm bouncing the light off the glass in about 90 degree angle right now but different angles work and it produces different patterns you can find different patterns okay there it is reflectography